Okay, so that was the probability mass function. Next, we will look at the cumulative distribution function, in short, the CDF. Now, the definition is given here, and the notation is usually a capital F with the subscript denoting the random variable. And we, again, usually use the small case version as the free variable of the name of the random variable. So this is a little bit confusing sometimes. Uh, this here is a free variable and you can use any, any variable name you would like. For instance, you can use f sub x of t, f sub x of y, f sub x of z, if you like. But the usual notation that you will see in many textbooks is, is this. So you should get used to it. And this is the definition. The CDF of random variable X is equal to the probability that random variable X is less than or equal to the value X this year. Okay, so this is the definition. And for a discrete random variable, we can express this in terms of the PMF. Because now this is an event, you see. Okay, and I can write the probability of this event in terms of the, the PMF by adding up the values included in this event. Okay, so for a discrete random variable, if you just add up the PMF values up to and including this X value, okay, then you get the CDF value. Now let's see this on an example. This here is um, the, the exact example we have seen just now for, for the PMF. And here the PMF is plotted. And on this graph, we will also plot the CDF value. Always remember the definition here. Now, when X is less than or equal to one, you see, we do not have any outcomes or any values that random variable can take below one. Therefore, this probability should stay at zero up to one. You see, I included this, this little circuit, circle here to indicate that the CDF value um, is zero up to point one. But let's see what happens at exactly one. Now, when you put in that definition, the CDF of X at one, by definition, this is equal to the probability that X is less than or equal to one, okay? And you can find this probability using the PMF by adding up the only value that X can take, which is one, which means it's equal to two over eight, the PMF value at one. Therefore, at this point, the CDF is not continuous. It will have a jump. So up to one, it is zero. But at exactly one, the CDF becomes two over eight because now the point one is included in the event. This is the reason we call this function cumulative. So the probabilities are accumulated along the real line. So beyond one, it will become um, two over eight at exactly one. And up to two, the next value that the random variable can take, it will stay at two over eight. But again, at two, since I have a positive probability of one over eight, the CDF value at two is going to be equal to by definition, the probability that X is less than or equal to two. And again, by the properties of the PMF, I can write this as the sum of PMF values of X at one and the PMF value at two. Now this is two over eight and this is one over eight. Therefore at exactly two, I should observe a jump by the probability of two, which is one over eight. So the CDF will become from two, uh, two over eight, it will become three over eight. Okay, you see this jump here is equal to the probability of 
um, x being equal to one. And this jump here, the amount of this jump is equal to the probability of x being equal to two. Okay, so it goes on like this, up to four, it stays at three over eight. And at four, it will have a jump with this amount, which is three over eight. So it should become six over eight. Okay, you, you see this amount in the, the, the amount of jump in CBF is equal to the probability here. Okay, again, it will stay constant up until 6.5, where you have another probability and you will observe another jump. Okay, again, the amount of this jump is equal to this probability here, and it will stay at that value up to seven, at which point you will have another jump and you will reach, you see, one, because now you have completed all values that the random variable X can take. Therefore, beyond seven, it must stay at one. 